Hey YouTubers, just a really quick vlog. Um, still working on the, all the same stuff that I said I was working on in the last vlog. Uh, the giveaway site is actually coming along really well. Basically it's functionally complete. So it's kind of working. That means that there's no reason I can't go ahead and start getting prepped for doing the giveaway, but I still need to do the final features um, review on the um, Mindshift Gear Horizon uh, bag. So uh, I'll move away from that. I really wanted to talk about Leica. And uh, there's two reasons for that. Two. Uh, the first reason is I walked into work one day this week and my boss pulled this out and handed it to me and said, here, I know you like Leicas. Uh, you can have this. So he gave me a Leica R3. I guess he had it sitting around. He, he's had it since new, I believe. And uh, now it's mine. So uh, it was pretty darn nice of him, I think. It's in really nice condition. It, it looks great. And it's got a 50 millimeter, a 50 millimeter Simicron on it as well. So it's really, really nice of him. So uh, here's how it sounds. I'll put it next to the mic. I believe the batteries are dead, so it doesn't matter what speed. I put it on, it sounds the same no matter what. Uh, here it is on a second. So yeah, I, th I think it has one of those deals where it'll shoot at like a 60th or a 125th uh, if uh, if the batteries are dead. But it's a, it's a really nice little camera. I like the way it feels in the hand. It's, it's pretty small, but uh, it's a lot heavier than you might think when you first pick it up. So I thought I would, if I can lift the R8. It. So here's my R8 with a 28 millimeter lens on it, and here's the R3, and I'll kind of put them together. You can kind of see how they compare. You know, I guess I've considered the R8 to be very large, but, you know, holding them up like this, the thing that makes the R8 look really big is the, the sh shoulders. Instead of going down, you know, having a prism that, that, you know, has low shoulders, the R8's just kind of almost flat across the top. Uh, anyway, so let's compare shutter sounds real quick. Uh, this is the R8 and this is really, let me test this. So here's the R8 at a quarter. Yeah, so batteries are fine in this guy. Uh, I'll do a 60th on the R8 and let me get the uh, R3 wound. Okay, so here's the R8. Here's the R3. A lot more mechanical sound in this camera than the R8. The R8 is really well damped and it's a fairly heavy camera. It's a little heavier than the R3. Um, so you barely feel the shutter tripping in the R8 where it's a, you feel it a little more in, well, not much more in the R3. So uh, that was just really nice. Thought I would share that with you. I hope to shoot this thing at some point. I really hate shooting 35 millimeter film anymore though. I, I hate developing 35 millimeter and I really hate scanning it. So, I don't know, no promises. Um, now that we're on Leica, I'm gonna move to something else. I don't know if you guys have heard about it, but Leica released yet another new camera. They've got a boatload of cameras now. But anyway, they released a mirrorless camera, full frame. It's called the Leica SL. And that's kind of interesting because it harkens back to their original SLR, which was called the SL. Uh, it, came, it was before this camera. By the way, the R3, is the first in sort of like as modern 35 millimeter SLRs. What came before the R3 was the SL2, I guess, and, and the SL before that. Uh, so they've they've brought this name back. And so the SL, I guess you could consider it to be the digital R that everybody was hoping that Leica would come out with years and years ago when they discontinued the R9. Uh, so you can kind of think of it as that, but I'm gonna flash some pictures up here, and these are Leica's own um, promotional pictures. Um, it's fugly, it is gross, it is not nice. I, I hate the way it looks, and I don't think Sony's cameras, including my own, my a7 II, I think those cameras are ugly too, but the Leica actually manages to be uglier. And yeah, I know that doesn't really matter as long as the camera performs, but you want 
a $7,000 camera to look cool. At least I do. I don't know about you. So it's just, it kind of looks like a prototype that escaped into the wild, you know, and got into the factory somehow, and they, they actually built it. I mean, it's got this, this goofy grip that has no contour at all. It's just a cylinder tacked on to the camera. Essentially, it's not quite a cylinder, but it's close enough. And uh, I don't know. I just don't love the flat planes. That's the same thing I, d I didn't really love about uh, the Sony A-Series. But um, this looks worse. So, okay, looks don't matter for everything. Uh, Specs-wise, uh, this camera is kind of middle of the road right now for high-end cameras. It's 24 megapixels. I'm not going to go into a bunch of specs about it. Um, 24 megapixels and full frame. Um, it's got a really great EVF from what I've read. Like it's way beyond anything that's out there right now. It's got pretty good movie modes. I don't remember the exact specs. Uh, you can go look that stuff up. I'm not going to read it out or sure, certainly didn't memorize it. Um, the lenses, it has a new lens line. Um, it is, uh, it's an SL. I think it's, they call it the L mount. Uh, so, um, these lenses are huge. And I think what they've done, I've picked this up by reading about, is they've basically decided to make these lenses no compromise lenses. So some of them have in the teens of elements. And I, I could swear one of them was over 20 elements. So they're putting a lot of glass into these things. So they're heavy, they're big. Um, just the camera itself is big. If you look at a photo of it next to a human, uh, even the camera body is really big for uh, a mirrorless body. So they aren't, certainly aren't trying to go for compactness with this. Seems like they're going for the pro world, but I don't know how many pros are going to go for a Leica over, you know, like Nikon or Canon's pro line. I just, I don't know if I see that happening. I don't see huge benefits other than the viewfinder and so forth, and we know all the other cameras are going to get better. So this is a long, really long-winded way of saying I'm not sure how well Leica is going to do selling a $7,000 body. This lens, uh, the first one, uh, the zoom lens they've released, it's a variable aperture lens. It's huge. It's heavy. It's a 24 to 90. It's 5,000. So just to get started, you're 12K into this thing if you want to use a native lens with autofocus. Um, that's pretty tough to swallow when there's so much competition that's so very similar to this camera. Uh, I just don't see this being something I could be interested in, and, and I don't know. I'm not sure what the market really is. The cool thing is you can snap, just like with a Sony uh, A-Series, you can snap just about any lens ever made on it because it's got that short flange to sensor distance. So you can mount your Leica R lenses on it which I bet a lot of people that do buy this camera, they'll do just that. So they'll have that like our digital that they always wanted. It's interesting that they released it. Uh, I'm just not quite sure uh, how it separates itself other than by price in today's digital camera market. Uh, maybe I'll rent one at some point if it doesn't cost a fortune and uh, do a review kind of like I did with the, uh, like a monochrome back when it was uh, fairly new to the market. So uh, anyway, there you have it. I will uh, catch you later.